Let's cross to our Chief Foreign Editor, Rob Parsons, who's joining us this morning from Mykolaiv. Good to have you with us, Rob. Talk to us firstly about the situation in Kherson. You and the team spent several days there this week and the region, it's under near constant shelling. Electricity, blackouts we're hearing about constantly. How are people coping there? Yeah, the, the situation is pretty bleak, it has to be said. We did spend indeed three days uh, in Kherson uh, this last week. Uh, the city is pretty much empty. There were 330,000 people before the start of the war. There are less than 70,000 now. The schools are all shut, all 171 of them. Uh, and people are suffering from the electricity cuts that you referred to in your introduction then. Yesterday, uh, the authorities had managed to restore electricity in the city to around 75%. But overnight, the Russians hit the city again, and this morning there was total blackout. Engineers are working on restoring electricity, and apparently it has been restored in parts of the city. But it gives you an idea of the sort of problem that people are facing. You know, one, one day they think they're getting there, they're getting the electricity going again, and then the Russians hit again, and it's back to the same. Um, Rob, with a consequence that most people are trying to get out. Sorry, but the consequence is that most people are trying to get out. Uh, they, ha they have set up tents around the city where people can go for warmth. Uh, and yesterday, Friday, we went and visited one of those and spoke to people who were there. They were drinking coffee, charging up their mobile phones, that sort of thing. You know, it w one woman, an elderly lady said to me, you know, with derision in her voice, you know, the Russians say they came here to liberate us. And she said, to liberate us from what? From the good lives that we had before? Rob, sorry for cutting across you there earlier. I was just wondering how the situation in Kherson compares with where you are now in Mykolaiv. Well, in Mykolaiv, the situation, it's not great, but it's certainly better than in Kherson. And the essential reason for that is that Kherson is within artillery range of the Russian army, which is only about 20, 25 kilometres away. Uh, so they're in a position to bombard the city much more easily uh, than they're able to bombard Mykolaiv, which since the liberation of parts of Kherson region is much further away. As a consequence, electricity has been pretty much restored, though not entirely restored, to Mykolaiv. Uh, and the water supply, which was a big problem for the, for the city, is beginning to get back going as well. Yesterday, they managed to uh, repair the water pipes. They can't yet pump fresh water into all the homes because of the electricity that we're speaking about. But once they get that properly fixed, then there should be water here as well. Uh, and that shows here, you know, in many respects, like if you drive around the city uh, at night, the lights are all on, there are restaurants that are working, people are, are wandering around. The city obviously is nothing like as full as it used to be. But by comparison with Kherson, things are certainly better. OK, Rob, we leave it there. That's our chief foreign editor, Rob.